How are you doing? This is UK Fish ID videos. For these series of films, I'm going to show you how to identify various British fish, both from the sea and fresh water. We're going to go through what they eat, where they live, and how to identify them from similar species. If you'd like to learn more about identifying UK fish, then why not get my latest book? It's available online and in local bookshops. There's a link in the description if you're interested. This week we're looking at lamprey. We have three species of lamprey in the UK and to the untrained eye they do look fairly similar. So let's get into it. This week we're looking at the lamprey. Now before we start, I'm going to do my usual disclaimer, you can't positively ID fish from colour alone. Fish change colour so rapidly according to health, age, sexual dimorphism, stress and the environment they live in. So colour is only to be used as a guide with other more accurate signs. With that out of the way, let's look at our first lamprey, and that is the brook lamprey. It has two large eyes and a circular mouth for grabbing rocks and holding on in the water. The colour overall is a range of slate greys to greens and yellows. Seven holes on the side of the head act as gills, with one continuous fin towards the tail, which dips slightly in the middle. This is the smallest and most common species of lamprey found in the UK. All lamprey have an amicete phase and they live in the silt and river and brook lamprey amicetes are very difficult to tell apart from each other but once in the adult phase it's much easier. Brook lamprey are pretty much the smaller versions of river lamprey with some believing that river lamprey are just a sea running form of brooks. This is the only non-parasitical lamprey in the UK, they don't feed on other fish. In terms of its distribution it's widespread in British rivers if you can find a clean, fast running gravelly river, there's a good chance you've got brook lamprey in it. They're found across small rivers, streams and brooks in Britain, generally with good flow, clean gravel and good water quality. Unlike the other two lamprey, this one isn't a parasite and it filter feeds in the silt. So while fast running water is needed for spawning, they also like silt beds. Around March, April time, they transform into the adult phase and females dig a red on the gravel with multiple males trying to spawn, and they soon die after. They get to around 15 centimeters in length. Next up is the river lamprey, and this is where there's a bit of confusion. Obviously, both species have got quite similar names, a brook lamprey and a river lamprey. So sometimes people might be referring to brook lamprey because they see a lamprey in a river and go, oh, I've seen a river lamprey. But what they mean is a brook lamprey. I hope that makes sense. But the river lamprey is its own distinct species. It essentially looks the same as a brook lamprey, but about twice the size. The disc-shaped mouth, characteristic of lamprey, and a grey to golden back with a dirty white belly. They're also known as lampern. This fish is thought to be the cause of death for King Henry I, who supposedly died of eating a surfeit of them. Whether the fish was off or what really caused his death is unknown, but the lamprey got the blame, apparently tasting of beef, so were popular in medieval banquets. Although river lamprey turn up in most large river catchments, I wouldn't say they're common by any stretch of the imagination, and they can be quite tricky to track down. Some years you might get an explosion in numbers and see hundreds of them, and then the following year you see barely any, so populations do tend to go up and down rapidly. So not a common fish, but you do find them in a lot of the river catchments across the UK. Now unlike the previous lamprey, these lamprey do go out to sea. They then return to fresh water in November using winter floods to push upstream to their spawning grounds. They'll then wait until April to spawn, gathering in large groups over gravel beds, and then the young will slowly drift downstream, eventually going to the sea, to feed on marine fish. They get to around 50 centimeters in length, so they are quite a bit bigger than brook lamprey, but smaller than our next entry, which is the sea lamprey. The easiest to ID out of the three due to its sheer size and distinct mottled yellow and light brown color. They have two dorsal fins, unlike the other two species. They also have a round mouth with layers of sharp rasping teeth to feed on prey and move rocks. Lamprey are some of the most ancient vertebrates in the world, and although we call them fish, they're only barely included. We are more closely related to salmon than our lamprey is, and these creatures have been around for over 300 million years. 
They've got a widespread distribution in large river systems in Britain, but are often in low numbers and they don't tend to push up too far upstream, with barriers to migration often halting their march upriver. They like fast flowing rivers with good flow and lots of gravel to spawn into. The latest spawning lamprey around about early July is typical for them. They don't feed when they're in fresh water in the UK, but some found in the Great Lakes in America will do so and have even attached themselves to swimmers. In terms of length, it does vary slightly, but well over 100 centimetres or a couple of foot, whatever you prefer. They get much bigger, much thicker than the previous two lamprey. Now I'm quickly going to mention another fish which isn't a lamprey and that is the eel. Although they aren't remotely related to lampreys but they do have a similar body shape so they could get confused with them. The quickest way is that they have pectoral fins and a jaw which lamprey don't. So I can understand how someone might confuse an eel and a lamprey when they're maybe looking over a bridge or if it's murky water but if you get a good look these fish are quite different so you're not likely to confuse them. So how do we tell those three lamprey species apart from each other? Well, it's all about size. So the brook lamprey is the smallest. If you're finding a lamprey that's under 20 centimeters, it's almost certainly gonna be a brook lamprey. If you find a lamprey that's around about the 30 to 50 centimeter mark, then it's gonna be a river lamprey. We can't go by color here because they both pretty much look the same. The only thing that's really distinguishing them is size. Confusingly, they both come out at the same time and you can even see them in the same reds. I'm not sure if they can hybridize, but it wouldn't shock me at all. So you might even see them next to each other. So size is key here. Finally, with the sea lamprey, they come out much later. So you're not likely to have much crossover with sea lamprey with the other species and they get much, much bigger much thicker. They have a mottled patterning, which the other two lamprey don't, with more of a yellow, muddy brown colour, whereas the other two are more of a silvery coloration. So size is key here. If it's very small, it's a brook. If it's about in the middle, it's a river. And if it's fucking massive, it's a sea lamprey. Don't forget, if you want to learn more about UK fish, do grab a copy of my book. There's a link in the description if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. It takes two seconds for you and it really helps the channel out. Go and have a look at some of the other UK Fish ID videos we've got on the channel, as well as the underwater and angling content on here. See you next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.